Hi everybody, this is Little Pug Games and today is part two of the Chicken Slayer tutorial. Today we'll go over how to add weapon recoil and last episode we went over how to implement a laser beam effect. Uh, so I'm going to split this into two parts. The beginning of the video will be mm, basically an overview of what we'll be doing in terms of code and the second part will be the actual coding part. Uh, I hope you guys like this tutorial and let's get started. Okay so what we're gonna do today is implement weapon recoil and this is a little overview of how we're gonna do it. So when we shoot a weapon we have an equal and opposite reaction right? So this weapon will go back at an initial velocity x, we'll say. So it's going to be moving back. And then what we want to do is give this weapon a positive acceleration so that it goes back to the start position. At each point in this, in this uh, scene, we'll have an offset. So an offset of vector x or vector x sure and then we'll also have a max x distance so this will be the maximum distance that the weapon will travel in that's basically how we're gonna implement this so once we're done you'll be able to add this script to your weapons and then also your cameras so let's get started with the programming part we're going to need a couple public variables like the ones we described in the diagram. So we're first going to need a public float and this will be a maximum offset distance. We'll also need a public float. We'll call this recoil acceleration. So this will be the acceleration back towards the weapon starting position. And finally, we'll have a public float called weapon recoil start speed. So when we shoot and we add recoil, we're going to set it equal to this weak, uh, weapon recoil start speed. We're going to need a couple private variables as well, and I'll describe why we need them as we go along. So the first one is a boolean called recoil in effect. And this simply lets us know if we are currently in recoil mode. Next, we'll need a private bool, and we'll, we'll call this weapon headed back to start position. So we're going to set this equal to true once we once we hit this maximum offset distance and we start moving back towards the starting position. We're going to need two other variables and both of these will be vector 3s and they'll be used to store first our offset position and the next one will be used to store our speed. So recoil speed. Next, we are going to set a start function. And we're going to set these variables to just zero them out, basically. Let's also add a public function called add recoil and this will simply just add recoil to whatever object this script is attached to. We're going to need a couple things here. So we're going to set the recoil in effect to true because now we we're in a state we're in a state where we do have recoil. So let's set that to true. We're going to say weapon headed back to start position. 
weapon headed back to start position is going to be false. And finally, our, we're going to set our recoil speed. So our recoil speed is going to be equal to transform dot right. And we're going to multiply this by the weapon recoil start speed. Weapon recoil start speed. So this line basically says, well, I'll show you guys right now. So we have this weapon and this red axis is right. We're going to say add recoil in this direction, but since our Excel, our start speed is in the negative direction, it'll send recoil down to the left side. So let's go back. And we're also going to create an update method. And we're just going to say update recoil. And we'll create a mini function down here. private void update recoil. So first things first, we want to see if we are in a recoil state. So if recoil in effect is equal to false, then we're going to return out of this function because we have nothing to do. Return. And now we have to set our physics variables up basically set up speed and then position so we're gonna set our recoil speed so recoil speed we're gonna add to it our negative of the offset position dot normalized and we're going to multiply that times the acceleration times time dot delta time so if if you remember from physics speed is dependent on acceleration and time and now we're going to find the new position so the new offset offset position and this will be determined by the recoil speed and the time variable. So the new offset position is going to be equal to offset position plus recoil speed times time dot delta time. Finally, we're going to set a new transform variable up. And we'll name this vector three new transform position. And we'll call this, or we'll set this equal to transform dot position minus the offset. Now we have an if statement. The first thing we need to check for is have we gone past our maximum? offset distance. If we have, then we need to start heading, heading back to our starting position. So the way we check for this is if the new offset position magnitude is greater than the maximum offset distance, then we need to take action. So we're going to say that the object speed, so the recoil speed, we're going to say that this is now equal equals to vector three zero. So we need, we want the weapon to stop in its tracks, and then it's going to start heading back. We're also going to say weapon headed headed back to start position is now equal to true, because now we're heading back to the start position. And the last thing we want to do is we want to set the new offset position 
equals to offset or excuse me yes offset position dot normalized and we're just going to multiply that by the maximum offset distance so this will just get us to that maximum offset position oh wait spelled that wrong position awesome now the next check we need is if we've arrived back to our starting position and we'll do this by first checking if weapon headed back to start position is equal to true and we also so this part's a little hard to explain but if our new offset position dot magnitude is greater than our offset position dot magnitude then we will need to stop so we need to set a couple things up so we will need to set our transform dot position is minus equals the old offset or the offset position we also need to set up our old offset position so offset position is now equal to vector 3 dot 0 and we do this because we are no longer in a recoil state so we want to set this back to zip now we want to set up our booleans so we're gonna say recoil in effect is now false we are no longer in a recoil state and weapon headed back to start position is equal to false as well after this we're going to return and finally the last thing we want to do if we're in this case is just simply say transform dot position is equal to this new transform position we, we found up here new transform position and then we're going to add the new offset position and now we are going to set the offset position equal to the new offset for the next iteration and with that I believe we are done so let's go back to unity we're going to add our recoil script to our machine gun right here and we're gonna set the maximum offset distance to 0.3 recoil acceleration to 50 and negative 10 for our recoil start speed we're gonna go into our machine gun script to add this recoil script inside so let's go do that really quickly so first things first we need to say private recoil script we're going to name it recoil script and we're going to say in the start method we're going to say recoil script is equal to get component and we're just going to say recoil script and the only thing we need to do to add this recoil is when we fire the weapon we just need to say recoil script dot add recoil so let's go back to unity and test it out so let's save let's start project and let's shoot and there we go we have a recoil effect looks pretty cool so we can turn it around so today we implemented a recoil effect and we did that by using a little physics and changing our position of the game object we added the recoil script to in the next episode we'll go over how to add a sound effect to our weapon when we fire as well as adding the recoil script to our camera so that it'll add a camera shake effect in 
in the last episode, we'll go over how to add a particle system muzzle flash effect to the weapon. I hope you guys found this useful and thanks for watching. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day and bye.